silently gathering in every paddock of canola stubble across this country is a highly destructive storm. The threat comes from the fungal disease blackleg. That you can even hope to grow a successful canola crop in Australia is thanks almost entirely to being able to choose resistant cultivars. But even then, the resistance is short-lived. This work is very, very significant. In Australia, if we don't control black leg, it'll totally kill the crops. So in the 1970s, for instance, when we had no disease resistance, every crop died, and the canola industry was pretty much destroyed right up until the early 1990s when the breeders had got resistance back into the cultivars. Steve Marcroft leads the Canola Disease Screening Project, which has been running for 10 years. It trials cultivars, calculating their level of resistance, and GRDC alone will fund this vital research for the next five years. It's like a co-evolution where the pathogen and the plant are in this war of resistance and virulence fighting each other all the time. The fungus survives on canola stubble and this year there'll be about 2.5 million hectares of it. The autumn break triggers masses of fungal fruiting bodies, each producing thousands of spores. They get splashed around by the rain and can travel on the wind, so a new crop emerging in the same paddock or nearby is going to cop a massive disease load. It's why canola shouldn't be sown into the previous year's canola stubble. If you imagine there's trillions and trillions of spores out there from those two and a half million hectares of stubble from last year, and every one of those spores, because they're a result of sexual reproduction, they're all genetically slightly different to each other. So what happens is that when you grow a brand new resistant cultivar, there's already a small proportion of those spores which can attack that cultivar. Previously resistant cultivars can become totally susceptible within a few years, and grain growers need to know when their chosen cultivars are about to tip over the edge of yield loss and be ready to select a replacement cultivar. That's where the disease screening trials come in. On eight disease nursery sites like this one at Wagga Wagga in New South Wales, every commercial and pre-release cultivar is sown. We sow them in our high rainfall zones where we expect to get high levels of disease, and we sow them into canola stubble from the previous year. So we get very high levels of disease and very uniform disease across the paddock. We sow them in rows of about 150 plants, we count how many germinate, and then we count how many survived at the end of the year. And it's the survival data that we're interested in. As well as a ranking of the cultivar's resistance, there's a rating for seed that's been treated with fungicide prior to sowing. And cultivars are now grouped to further improve management of the black leg disease. And we're now at the stage where we can identify the individual resistance genes in each cultivar. So that if we start to see particular cultivars dying in a particular region, we can say it's because they contain resistance gene one. And then we can inform farmers if their resistance gene one is being overcome, they can switch to resistance gene two. A black leg management guide on GRDC's website is updated as this new data becomes available. And as the presence of black leg is highest in the previous season's stubble, there's a guide to indicate the severity of the disease based on how close the new crop is to last year's stubble. There are other crop management practices to help growers reduce their crop's disease risk, including the use of a foliar fungicide. The trick for that is we know that where yield loss is occurring, that the foliar fungicides are very, very effective, but most growers don't have yield loss from black leg if they're managing the seeds correctly, so they've got to make the economic decision whether it's worthwhile them spending the money on the foliar fungicide or not. Being stubble-born and sexually reproduced, blackleg will always threaten to be canola's most devastating disease. However, following the blackleg management guide and inspecting your crop for signs of disease will give you the best chance of managing the risk. Mm -hmm.